All right, welcome everybody to a Wednesday product spotlight. We are coming to you live from Charlotte, North Carolina. However, we are taking a virtual trip all the way to the west coast plant prefab is to ready to open nation's first automated factory dedicated to efficiently and sustainably building multi-family and single family housing production hub will be fully industrialized plant prefabs patented modular mod panelized building systems expanding service to the entire western united states and producing up to 800 dwelling units per year. These are just a few examples of the headlines Plant Prefab is making, now serving the entire West Coast and offering high design and using a hybrid approach of panelized and volumetric modular construction. How is the Plant Prefab team redefining sustainable buildings, enabling industry leading speed to market and supporting large multifamily projects? The future of real estate tech is here here. How is this building technology company making it all happen? We're going to find out in just a moment, but first we got to thank our sponsors. Big shout out to Ben Hershey and his team at Forward Solutions Group for allowing us to deliver these examples of construction innovation. Forward Consulting Group is successfully driving companies to succeed where others have failed. Learn more about Forward's recent acquisition of Modicorp in ERP solution for offsite manufacturing to get more information, reach out to Ben Hershey at ben at forwardsolutionsgroup.com. Also, a big shout out to Howick. We love Howick. Howick has a long history of innovation in cold form steel manufacturing and produces innovative precision roll forming technology for customers throughout the U.S. and the world. Check out the Machine Buyer's Guide for off-site modular construction or fast build construction with light steel for framing. Please go to their website at howickltd.com. All right, without further ado, let's get into it and bring my good friend, Steve Glenn, into the conversation. Steve, welcome to the Dave Cooper Live Show once again. What's happening? Uh, good to be back with, uh, with you. Yeah. And it, um, uh, excited that you're speaking to me from my home state of North Carolina. I grew up in Chapel Hill, uh, not, not too far from oh, you where did? you are today. Yeah, yeah, we are sitting in the beautiful Duke Mansion. I don't know if everybody, anybody's ever come here. Don't stay at a Holiday Inn or a Hampton Inn or any of those. Look up this Duke Mansion. You will not be disappointed. It's absolutely beautiful. All right, Steve, we're, uh, we, we got to jump into this. We got a lot to cover. Why don't you give everybody a quick update on who Steve Glenn is, and then we're going to jump into all the great things you're working on. The floor is um, yours. Sure, thank you. Uh, so um, I'm in the founder and CEO of Plant Prefab. We design and uh, manufacture uh, custom architectural, sustainable, single and multifamily housing. Well, you are, yes, you're also the, you're also running a superior manufacturing facility out in California that we had the opportunity to travel through um, and you're expanding on all that. Steve, let's let's kind of hop into this. You know, Plant Prefab uh, is a certified B Corporation building technology company. Can you explain to us what that certified B Corporation building technology company is and what kind of what does it mean to you and your team? Yeah, so um, uh uh, we're, we're a mission-driven company. Um, what, what that means is we're, we're, we're trying to wed profit and, and purpose in, in the work we're doing. So um, we, we are a venture finance company, um, which kind of implies that we are focused on ultimately creating shareholder value. Right. Um, that's um, pretty standard with, with companies, at least that raise investment. Investors want return. But our investors also understand that we have a, a mission uh, uh, aspect to our business. And, and frankly, we think it's inexorably linked to the profit side, but um, uh, we think both agendas help to support and enhance each other. Um, but our, on, on the mission side, uh, we are trying to um, build <clears throat> the homes we build in an extremely responsible way, and by that I mean specifically with respect to sustainability, with respect to health or, or off-gassing, which is a health issue um, uh, uh, of the homes we build, 
Um, so um, we're careful about the materials we use, the manufacturing processes, um, uh, how we operate. That impacts ultimately our ecological footprint. Um, uh, we also uh, are trying to be a, a really good uh, corporate citizen with respect to uh, our staff uh, and the communities uh, uh, within which we, we operate. So um, mm -hmm. uh, there is a nonprofit that certifies businesses um, uh, as B Corps, benefit corps. And what they're doing is looking at what you do and how, the products and services, how you treat employees, uh, how transparent you are about your um, uh, operations and practices uh, in order to certify that you operate in a, in a, in a um, right. responsible way that that they're that, that that you are a mission driven business um, I, it's a pretty rigorous process and that and that's that's what it means to be a certified b corp so let me ask you with being a certified b corporation and and having that mission driven focus having that culture that you're building within the organization to have that uh, mission driven focus for sustainability and, and being corporate, you know, responsible and all that. Does it help you bring in good talent? Are they excited about that? You know, is there, is there a benefit to that on hiring the next generation? I, I, I hope so. I think so. Um, um, there, uh, so there's a, a former Stanford professor, Jim Collins, who's done a lot of work on, on what makes companies great. Um, which he defines as industry leaders for an extended period, I think 10, 15 years. And he's done a lot of work on this area. Good to Great is, is probably his, his, yeah. his sort of most well-known book. And, you know, what he found is that great companies aren't defined by things that, that, that you may believe um, correlate, at least the number one biggest correlate, you know, charismatic CEO uh, or really fast-growing industry, right. but rather the number one biggest correlate great companies is um, uh, your, 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 the employee's belief that there is a greater mission uh, behind their work. So um, we have unusually high retention rates vis-a-vis -vis the industry um, uh, in which we work, uh, construction. And I'd like to believe um, that it's because we treat people really well um, and um, uh, people feel like we're doing important work um, uh, 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 so uh, but I, I certainly don't know that for a fact well you know I can tell you because uh, we had the opportunity Jennifer and I to visit your facility in California just a few months ago uh, and and the environment was amazing. The workforce was amazing. The product you were putting out, you know, with this hybrid, and we're going to get into that. I think was also amazing. So uh, I think I think it's highly uh, uh, responsible and uh, commendable uh, that you're you're taking a look at going this route and being certified B and all that. So uh, well done. I, I we don't hear a lot of it out here on the show that that's even an opportunity for companies to be part of a certification like that so I hope it spreads a little bit more because I think it's a great recruitment tool and I think it's a great tool for the environment and the future of what we're building so love it so let's talk about addressing local and global issues with sustainable building technology so when we talk about you know sustainable or you know I we understand that but how are you addressing it with the technology side of this well first let's let's make sure we understand the, the, the problem here um, uh, if you look at buildings as a category versus, say, all manufacturing or all transportation, buildings, at least in the U.S., and I think it's pretty similar worldwide, use more electricity, more energy to heat, cool, and power, um, or I should say, more energy and electricity, specifically, um, in, this, in this country, it, you can directly attribute to buildings in order to light, cool, and power them um, versus uh, the energy used for all manufacturing, the energy used for all um, uh, transportation. And that means that buildings, therefore, are responsible for more carbon emissions. 
again, because of the energy required to heat, cool, and, 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 and light them. And so uh, for those of us who, who believe that we um, have um, a relatively short amount of time to dramatically uh, reduce our carbon footprint, um, or we will face even more dire uh, uh, climate changes, uh, buildings are we, 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 we've got to we've got to operate in a more responsible way um, build and, and operate in a more responsible way so that that kind of sets part of um, uh, uh, what we're trying to do with um, uh, on, on kind of the mission side of our business build in a more responsible way but there's another part we are targeting the architecture market so that's people yeah. hiring an architect to create a specific solution for a specific property. That pretty much defines all multifamily, but it also defines kind of everything that, that happens in, in, in cities, because cities, um, in the U.S. at least, tend to be comprised of odd-sized lots that can change neighborhood to neighborhood, and odd-sized zoning that can change neighborhood to neighborhood. And mm -hmm. so, um, in addition to being the most expensive places to build because of land, labor, and material costs, even permit fees, you also have this problem of the fact that you have to do uh, more custom construction. There isn't just one size that, that sort of right. fits all in any city. And so we're trying to, 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 to address both of those challenges slash opportunities. Um, and... Um, uh, we are kind of purpose built to do that, to build uh, custom architecture, single multifamily, um, primarily it's an urban infill market, but also um, uh, uh, mountain communities, uh, second home right. communities, again, places where land and labor is expensive and labor is scarce. That's our target. I'm sorry though, I don't, I forgot your question and I hope I answered it, but if not, you can ask again. Yeah, no, no, no. It was it was addressing the global issues with sustainable building and technology. And you did you you did answer it. And I think if you were to give somebody advice, because you you've been really focused on this for a while, like where does a business start on the journey of any part of what you are, are have been doing for the last couple of years already? When it comes well, are to you, sustainable, are you asking just in general? Is is a question of like if you're starting a new business, what what? Yeah, what are you I mean. Doing? Yeah, well, I mean, what like where, what do you address first? Is there one thing that you address first within the business to to reach those sustainable goals or the building technology goals, or is it a multitude of things? Well, it's a multitude a multitude of things. If we're talking specifically about sustainability, but but I can say this: the most, you know, sustainability um, kind of defined broadly is um, has. Um, energy implications, water implications, material imp um, resource implications, the idea being how to build or operate in a way that, that reduces the negative impact you have on the environment. Um, and so the big categories are you know, energy, water, um, yeah. material resources. The most important category, I think most people who really closely track um, uh, climate change would tell you is energy, and here's why. Um, your building, whether it's a home, an office, the, the Duke uh, a Manor, whatever it, it is that you're in, or a football stadium, most buildings will consume way more energy over their useful life than is embodied in the materials used to create that building. So while it is important for a variety of reasons to think carefully about the materials you use, Mm -hmm. It's even more important to think about all the things that ultimately impact energy use, right? And, and energy use is heating, um, cooling, and light. Um, so you want to make that building as energy efficient as possible. Uh, in, uh, tight building envelope, really um, uh, 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 incredibly um, uh, uh, efficient insulation windows, uh, HVAC systems, appliances, lighting, all that reduces your yeah. energy use. And then ideally, you're going to um, produce energy in a more sustainable way, which for the most part uh, means solar power. Although 
um, heating and cooling in some areas where this makes sense, geothermal can be a great solution. For sure. Yeah, we were just talking about that last night. The hybrid approach. You are not just taking one straight line using, you know, sticks or steel. You're mixing uh, parts and components of different, uh, in, you know, of the different pieces of our industry to really build unique structures. Why don't you talk to us about this hybrid approach? And uh, you're obviously continuing it, so we'd love to learn more. Yeah, so, um, you know, we're pretty unique in this, and, you know, here's why we're doing it. Um, there are two major building systems um, uh, in, in the industry currently, um, modules and panels and really uh, almost any company you've heard of is doing one or the other. I, I'll acknowledge there's also 3D printing. There's a few folks doing that. And, and maybe that'll become a, a, a major building system uh, assembly too, but currently uh, it, it's not, uh, right. uh, certainly not nearly as, um, uh, comprehensive in, in terms of its reach as the other two systems. And modules and panels both have certain advantages and, and, and disadvantages. You know, let's take, let's take modules. Um, modules are great because you can build in an all-weather facility in parallel to your site work. So, um, you know, no weather delays, uh, parallel work that can um, substantially reduce your um, uh, uh, your, your time, your construction time, um, you can sometimes take advantage of lower cost labor, at least vis-a-vis -vis your project site. So right. there can be some cost advantages in that too. Um, the downside of modules are that uh, they're very expensive to ship um, and um, they have a lot of redundant structure. So um, sometimes it's hard to solve certain design problems with all that redundant structure, particularly for the multifamily folks, right? Who in general are looking to max out number of units, max out floor, floor space for those units. They have a harder time with redundant structure. So um, they often use panels uh, for their projects, panels, uh, much less redundant structure, so easier to solve. Uh, the the um, design problems more elegantly, and they ship flat, um, super efficient ship. But you know the major panel systems are either um, literally just frames, or maybe it's a SIP, um, so it's framing and insulation. But you still have to do electrical, plumbing, cladding, drywall, finished material. If it's a kitchen or bath, millwork, tiles, appliances. So all that work that I just briefly reviewed shifts. On, back on site. And as I said, we at least are focusing on areas where that labor is most scarce and most expensive. So we designed and patented a, a new kind of panel. It comes with infrastructure. It comes with finished material. We're building um, with, 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 with um, a little bit of automation currently, but with the new factory uh, that we broke ground. And actually, that's our third. When you visited us, we, I think we had two factories working then, uh, Rialto and Ontario, uh, but, but we broke ground on our third, which will be our first uh, fully automated facility. Right. We'll be making those panels, which we call plant panels, with a very high degree of automation. And then we combine them uh, for uh, the modules that cover wet cores and, and the expensive parts of the home, the kitchens, baths, uh, utilities. Um, so, um, and then we um, uh, inc uh, we use panels to create the parts of the home or the project that have much less complexity, right? Bedrooms, hallways, studies. So now with this hybrid system, and every project we've done for the last two years has been a hybrid. It's not totally true. We did one project um, actually for architect Maya Lin that was all panels. But other than that, um, it's been a combination of mods and panels. Uh, we get greater creative flexibility, greater transportation flexibility and, 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 and efficiency, and greater cost efficiency. So that's been a really important new system for us. So, you know, one of the things that also, not just your hybrid approach that makes it different, 
you're working with architects, right? That's not something that's super common in our industry. And you're not just working with one or two, you have come up with a system to work with several architects. Can you just, uh, before we get into this new factory uh, that, you're, that you're building, I know we touched on it, talk about some of the projects that you're currently working on and how valuable to the modular space or the hybrid approach that you're in, have these really high end, and I say high end, very, um, the visionary architects that have joined forces with you, how, how valuable is that to you and your team and everything that you do? Well, it, it, it's really broader than that. You're, you're actually focusing on our marketplace, um, which are homes that we've designed with, with um, uh, just world-class architects and designers yeah. like, uh, Brooke Scarpa and Kieran Timberlake and Eve Bahar sure. and Ray Cappy. Um, but but um, really, I think, frankly, the bigger story is that we can work with any architect. And that's very unique, right? Some companies in the space are trying to disintermediate architects. They want to do design and construction, uh, really replace local architects. We're, we're, we're taking the opposite approach. We, we think uh, the tens of thousands of architects who design for the Santa Monica's and West Hollywood's and Oakland's and uh, Menlo Parks, um, uh, uh, Portland's. We think they're great because they understand local vernacular and materials and permitting needs. We want to empower them. We want to give them and their clients a better way to build, at least vis-a-vis -a, -vis a traditional uh, site-based approach, uh, and you know, better defined as faster, maybe lower cost, certainly more sustainable and healthier, certainly uh, very high quality. Um, and and um, the bet we've made is those folks will never be replaced by just a handful of companies designing, you know, in their offices in, in one place for the entire country. That 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 architecture in this country will will turn will continue to be a very localized um, uh, kind of practice. And so we want to empower those folks. Uh, so we have a whole section in our website. Um, planprefab.com designed for architects with design guidelines. Here's how you can uh, design for our system. We have an AIA accredited course teaching them about prefab. Um, so that, I think that's frankly the biggest sure. story that we can work with anybody on, on any design. And that's, that's one of the reasons why we did this whole um, uh, hybrid approach um, was to um, uh, w with respect to our building system to to allow us greater flexibility to work on different types of designs with different architects. Yeah, for sure. And I, I mean, to come up with not only uh, a way to work with them, but also to uh, have a system to where they can get some uh, their credits towards it and learn, I think is speaks speaks volume. All right, we have a few minutes, everybody, uh, left in this. And we're going to get into the new factory, but we are live on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Twitter. So get your tweets on. You should be out there tweeting hashtag plant prefab as we uh, speak. But don't leave this channel just yet. And make sure you're following Steve Glenn and all the awesome things they are doing. Uh, they are taking uh, prefab modular panelization to the next level, uh, and we're going to talk about that now. All right, Steve, this new factory, this, this, this approach you're taking, you have two factories already under your belt. we got another factory that you're, you're doing right now and, and operational. Um, what have you learned, and why is this third factory even an improvement over the first two? Yeah, well, this is this is just a very different kind of factory for us. Our, 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 our two existing uh, factories um, are doing things um, mostly manually. I mean, we have some CNC equipment to cut lumber, but um, um, we 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 um, uh, a core component for us is our plant panel in in Rialto. We have a a line where we do that, um, as he said, mostly manually, but in the new hub, we'll be doing that with a very high degree of automation. And that's really about, um, uh, with that, we'll be able to uh, dramatically increase um, our velocity, the number of homes we do, um, as we reduce our costs. And that will enable us to serve more parts of the country, um, uh, more time and cost effectively, um, and more different types of housing segments. Yeah. Um, uh, so currently, with our two factories, we can do, depending upon the size of the units, maybe you know, 30, 50 units a year. 
in this new facility will be able to do 800 plus a year. So it's wow. a significant change uh, in terms of, um, and I should say, um, in, in that facility and the associated um, fabrication facilities that that, sure. that that support it's a hub and spoke model. So when so 800, you know, so let's let's what is technology wise right are, are we are we talking robots are we talking you know full automation are we talking just you know really high-end jigs and lasers which what, give give us a little bit of insight on that uh all the above um <laughs> uh, the, the, there's there's equipment that 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 does um uh, automatic tooling there are robots um it's yeah it's 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 kind of a comprehensive set of of equipment yeah. that, that that's designed to to, to build the, our, our plant panels mostly with automation. Um, yeah, I love it. So Steve, you, 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 you didn't start this way and this is a conversation and a question, uh, quite frankly, we get often is, you know, if we're starting a factory, where do we start? Do you need all of this automation to get started? Is that the first place you would have started years ago? Or is it something that you've no. learned to grow into? What, would, what advice would you give those out there watching this right now? Because, you know, we're short a lot of factories. There's no way that what we have now can help meet the housing demand that's out there, whether it's modular, hybrid, panelized, what have you. What advice somebody, a veteran like yourself, give the, the world? Uh, do not start with automation. Um, I mean, um, right. you know, figure out what you need to do and where automation can help you. Um, uh, you know, we've seen companies, certainly most famously Katera, yeah. who who have really started, um, you know, zero to to a hundred, you know, really quickly. And I, I'm sure that can work sometimes, but um, I say, you know, clarify what you need to do, how business model relationships. And then, um, and then you'll have a better understanding of where automation can help you with that. Um, but I think um, uh, you know automation isn't there to to fix your model; it's there to help enhance and extend your model, fix out your f figure out your model first. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, let's go to a couple comments and say hello to a few people that are out there just real quick. If you got a question, now is the time to put it in there. Uh, so good morning from Phoenix, Arizona. George Ryman, thank you for joining us today. Always a pleasure seeing you. Here's somebody, Steve, you should you should know, maybe mentor. Mateo Atley, they have their own factory. Him and his brother, get this, Steve. They're, they're, they're under operation, they're building. They're under the age of 25. Him and his brother started their own manufacturing. How cool is that? And awesome. in, in Louisiana, in Louisiana, and yeah, they're doing no, some I, amazing I, I stuff. I met those guys. Yeah. I met those guys at a, a, a conference uh, uh, or, or, uh, last year or earlier this year. Yeah, yeah. He says, we love learning about Steve's work. There he is at Austin last year. He put it in, doing some great stuff. So that is awesome. I'm glad you're making waves, Mateo. He remembers you. <clears throat> Not sure who this is, but good morning from Los Angeles. And we got Philip Saja calling in from Orange, California. All the way to Ireland, we got people watching you, Steve. This is good because oh, wow. you know that'll be your next that'll be your next stop, right? Yeah. And uh, let's see who else we got in here. Paula Travis. Good afternoon from East Tennessee. How much fun is this, Steve? We got we got such a following right now on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn joining us, uh, and they're from all over the place. It looks like Tennessee is a big place, right? Middle Tennessee. Kenny Brooks. All right, Chris Dros. Here's somebody you should know. Kuristros is uh, from Poland, and they have several manufacturing facilities in Poland, and they do some really beautiful stuff, and they work here in the United States as well. Good to see you, Chris. Uh, hi, great to see companies in U.S. being respectful for environment as we do in EU. Congrats for developing a smart material usage system and waste management. Um, so, Chris, thanks for joining us today. Steve, Chris, you guys should at least know each other. I think there's so much value in what you both have to offer. Chris is an architect by trade as well, uh, which is quite interesting. Blake Galey, good morning from Utah. Blake here from Sun Power. Excited that you have Steve Glenn on here. What a visionary. Steve, man, people like you. Look at that. I hope people like me as much as they like you. Blake, uh, who else we have? But, uh, Andrew Seely says, howdy all from somewhere in Texas. It's cold, but we are keeping warm listening to the great show. So Andrew Seely, G-Pod America's uh, Glenn, and I, Steve, I, I like to point these things out is, 
he has a property where he's building all these hybrid um, projects so they can be built modular, uh, panelized, or stick. So he's, he's putting these systems together, all super high performing, all off grid. His whole property has seven buildings, not a power soul runs on electricity that isn't created by the sun. How cool. Awesome. So, hey, Dave, well, while you're doing that, I'm going to... Oh, we lost him. What is he doing? Hey, all right, everybody. Well, we're going to keep going through this, and he'll catch back up with us here in just a few moments. There he comes. Uh, I, I you got too to, excited? I happen to be in the first home we ever designed. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to... Um, turn your, turn your phone landscape so we can see the landscape, and I'll put you full screen. Go ahead. Uh, let's see. I don't see how to turn it on landscape. Just turn I'm... just turn your phone, and it should oh, do that it. One. Oh, that awesome. There you go. Yeah, so I'm just going to walk around. Um, this was, uh, we worked with Ray Cappy on this home, um, uh, which is our show home in Santa Monica, which is my home. Um, so I just thought I'd, I'd share. This is the kind of stuff we can do because we do wood or steel. This one happens to be um, steel. And this is the first home ever certified lead platinum in the history of the, of the USGBC program. So, all right, everybody that's watching, this is a modular prefabricated house. Can you believe it? This is what we're trying to tell people. Uh, this is the way of the future, and that is absolutely beautiful and stunning, Steve. You're very lucky to be able to live in something like that. Yeah, no, I, I feel quite fortunate. I think, you know, we've done two things particularly well as a company. We've, um, we've been able to... Um, I think faithfully reproduce the great design work that the architects with whom we work, the, the design work they do um, in, in a prefabricated production uh, uh, technique um, or process. Uh -huh. But also we, um, uh, we, um, we've been able to build in, in an extremely sustainable way, but that doesn't hit you over the head. As I said, this is the first home certified lead platinum but I, I hopefully whether you like the designer or not it's not like you 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 are having to make sacrifices because of the decisions we've made that make the home so much more responsible from an energy and water material resource standpoint right right no i mean it's absolutely beautiful what are you using for the wood paneling on the walls uh it's um uh, it's a FSC certified plywood. Um, uh, so it's uh, FSC is a is a um, nonprofit that certifies that wood is grown and harvested in a sustainable way. So I mean, we're on the second floor. I'm assuming that was your bedroom. That's what you get to wake up and look out of every day. Yeah, and one of the things that that we have as an option uh, in homes, and and again, most of the homes we're doing are not design by us or our partners, right? This is, um, but but um, we have as an option, um, homes generally aren't designed to be adaptable to changing lifestyle needs. So one of the options we offer are movable walls. So this, this bedroom can be totally closed off. There's a pocket door, wow. there are guests, and, and, and these bedrooms have an accordion system, uh, wall system that again, can be totally closed off. Um, this space, if you ever wanted a private fourth bedroom, we could get rid of the railing here and put a, 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 a floor panel and two wall panels and create a private fourth wow. bedroom. So we like this notion of homes that can adapt to your changing lifestyle needs. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, that's beautiful. And hey, if you got any comments out there, you'd like to have a house like that. Look, uh, Plant Prefab has three factories. They'll be able to meet your needs, I'm sure of it. That's really cool, Steve. And we appreciate you, you showing us around. And this house, is it uh, on piers? Does it have a foundation? You know, a lot of people always ask, well, what does a modular or a hybrid home actually sit on? What is yours built on? Uh, this is slab on grade. No, normally we're doing in stem walls. Um, there you can see that that heats the hot water. Here's photovoltaics, um, roof garden, uh, reduces heat island effect. Um, so we sort of do what what what's what um, what the foundation requires. We're pretty flexible, but generally it's a stem wall. Got it. Got it. Great. Great. 
All right, well, I'm going to get to a couple more quick comments here. I want to say hi to uh, Sarah from Majukur. Hey, Majukur. So, hi, Dave and Steve. Great information, great business. Sounds incredible. This is one of Forward Solutions Group's uh, team members. Sarah is an awesome person, by the way, and they got an awesome ERP solution for the modular space. So, if you're not familiar with them, uh, you should check them out 100%. They're doing great, great stuff. All right, let's see. Uh, we got something here from Bobby Neil Jackson. Great comment on that not sure what he was talking about we're a little further I used to do robotic engineering saw so many times people automating when it didn't make sense there you go with finances or process I mean that's it you know Steve we were at the International Builder show this year right in in in, Orla in Orlando Florida and this was I mean we had a panel and in that panel we were sitting up I was up there with Ken Semler and some other folks you know Jerry McCahey and what have you and it was a panel on you know people looking to start manufacturing. And we when we asked how many people in the audience, and it was probably 100, 200 people in this room, how many people were looking to start factories and that's why they were there, the hands were through the roof. It was almost shocking. So, um, you know, your insight as an industry leader and sharing this stuff with us is so valuable. And I just really want to thank you for not only showing us that modular isn't just cookie cutter, it can be a beautiful, functional that home that fits in any environment in any community, or it could be, it could, doesn't even have to be like yours. It could be just very simple, but it can still be beautiful and functional. Uh, uh, my pleasure. It's uh, you know I love the um, love your um, uh, podcasts. Um, super informative. You always have great guests, and uh, honored to be with you. We're 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 so happy to have you here as well. Chris Dros says, Chris, am I getting that Polish last name better? Dros. Yeah, I, they always give me a hard time. As an architect, he says he loves it. So. That's it, everybody. I mean, we're at our we're at our forty five minute mark. Uh, we got Steve Glenn on. They're doing amazing things. Steve, when do we get a plant tour of the new facility? Is that is that optional or coming up soon? Uh, next year. It'll next be open year. Early next year. Yep. Early next year, we're also going to be doing some more panels. Unfortunately, you weren't able to join us in San Francisco, but we got some more coming up. So we look forward to hopefully having you join us. Chris Droz came all the way from Poland, uh, so that was fun. But you're doing amazing stuff, Steve. Uh, it's no wonder that there's so many people on all the social tuned in to listen to this. Uh, I would love, I, and I say love, I would love to be able to showcase the first house coming out of that manufacturing facility and, and show the world what you guys are doing. I think it's that important. Awesome. Uh, look forward to it. So, perfect. So, all right, listen, uh, Jen's trying to show me something. What are you showing me? Ah, got it, got it, got it. She's sitting there saying, I'm not on screen with you. So listen, let's, uh, let's plan that and let's, uh, let's, let's showcase it because I want people to understand modular isn't just you know four walls and has to look horrible. I mean, it is beautiful stuff. The world is changing. What you're doing, what Chris Theros is doing, what Mateo's doing and all these other people that are on here. I hope we all start talking. I hope we all start sharing knowledge. It's time to uh, build more sustainable, healthier homes not only for now but in the future and also you know hopefully we'll get even to the affordable market as we keep growing so steve thanks so much for your time i appreciate you being on the show today uh, my pleasure thank you all right don't go See anywhere i'll come back to you right after the outro and everybody else out there have a great day and please go right now and follow steve glenn and plant prefab and follow all their team members as well he has an amazing team doing amazing stuff you don't want to miss out what they have going on steve i'll see you in a few minutes everybody else okay. you have a wonderful day bye now